Uh, one of the themes that we've seen uh, already this morning is that ev everybody's taking billions of photos, trillions of photos perhaps. And our next speaker, Pete Warden from Google, is going to talk about that theme <laughs> and uh, explain uh, how we can use those to improve our world. So thank you, Pete. Okay, thanks. Um, so yeah, I'm Pete Warden. Uh, my day job is working as a research engineer uh, for the Google Brain team on some of this uh, deep learning vision stuff. Uh, but what I'm going to talk about today is actually trying to find interesting, offbeat, weird, non-commercial applications of um, this vision technology and why I think it's really important as a community that we sort of branch out to some sort of weird and wonderful, um, you know, sort of products and, um, you know, non-profit type stuff. Um, and why do I think we need to do this? So computer vision has some really deep fundamental problems, I think, the way that it's set up at the moment. Um, the number one problem is that it doesn't actually work. Um, <laughs> And, you know, this, I, I'm sort of, I, I, don't, I don't want to pick on Microsoft because their, um, you know, their how old demo was amazing. As a, like, a researcher and as somebody who's worked in vision for years, I, it's amazing we can do the things we do. But if you look at the coverage from the general public, they're just kind of confused and bewildered about the mistakes that it makes. Um, you know, and I could have picked any, you know, recognition or any vision technology um, and if you look at the general public's reaction to what we're doing, they're just kind of left scratching their heads. Um, and that just shows what a massive gap in expectations there is between what we're doing as researchers and engineers and what the general public actually expects. Um, and you know, what we know is that computer vision, um, the way we measure it, is actually starting to kind of sort of mostly work now, at least for you know, a lot of the problems that we actually care about. Um, and this is one of my favorite examples um, from uh, the last few months where Andre Karpathy from Stanford actually tried to do the ImageNet object recognition challenge as a human and just to see how well humans um, could actually do at the task that we'd set the algorithms. Um, and he actually spent weeks training for this, <laughs> doing sort of you know, manual training by looking through and trying to learn all the categories, um, and spent a long time on each image. And even at the end of that, he was only able to beat the best of the 2014 algorithms by a percentage point or two. Um, and his belief was that that lead was going to sort of vanish shortly as the algorithm, the trajectory of the algorithm improvements just kept um, increasing. Um, so it's pretty clear that, you know, by our own measurements, we're doing really well. But nobody's impressed that a computer can tell them that a picture of a hot dog is a picture of a hot dog. Um, that doesn't really um, get people uh, excited. And we really have not only a perception problem when we're sort of going out and talking to partners and talking to the general public and talking to people. Um, the applications that do work tend to be around security and government, and they aren't particularly uh, popular either. Um, and the reason this matters is um, not only do we... Uh, you know, have a perception problem, but we aren't actually getting the feedback that we need to get from, you know, working with real problems when we're doing this research. And so what's the solution? I mean, this is a bit asinine. Of course, we want to find pra pra uh, practical applications that help people. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about for the rest of this is just trying to go through some of my experiences, trying to do something a little bit... Um, you know, offbeat, a little bit different, um, and a little bit unusual with um, non-profit type stuff, just so we've actually got some practical, concrete, useful examples uh, of what I'm talking about. And 
The first one I'm going to talk about uh, is one that I did um, that didn't work at all. And I'm going to use this as a cautionary tale of how not to approach um, a new sort of, you know, sort of problem uh, that's trying to do something to help the world. Um, I came into this uh, with the idea that um, I was working at my startup Jetpack. We had hundreds of millions of geotagged uh, Instagram photos that were public that we were analyzing to um, build guides for hotels, restaurants, bars all over the world. Uh, we were able to do things like um, look at how many photos um, showed mustaches at a particular bar to give you an idea of how hipster uh, <laughs> that particular bar was. It actually worked quite well. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, but I knew that there was really, really um, interesting and useful information to solve a bunch of other problems that actually mattered. So one of the things that I thought I knew was that pollution gives you really, really vivid sunsets. Um, this was just something that had embedded in my mind, um, and it seemed like it would be something that I should be able to pull out from the millions of sunset photos we had all over the world. Um, so I went through, um, you know, I spent a bunch of time analyzing these, looking at um, public pollution data uh, from cities all over the US uh, with the hope that I can actually build this sensor just using this free open public data to estimate uh, pollution and, you know, sort of track pollution all over the world um, almost instantly. Um, unfortunately, it didn't work at all. And not only didn't it work, I actually had uh, worse sunsets uh, when I was seeing more pollution. Um, so at that point, I did what I should have done at the start and went back and actually looked at what the um, you know, atmospheric scientists were saying about pollution and sunsets. And it turns out only really high um, sort of atmosphere, very uniform particulate uh, pollution, which is what you typically get from volcanoes, actually gives you vivid sunsets. Other kinds of pollution, as you might you know, imagine if you've ever lived in LA, um, just gives you kind of washed out, blurry, um, grungy uh, sunsets. So, you know, the lesson for me from this was I really should have been listening and driven by the people who um, actually understood the problem and knew the problem rather than sort of jumping in with, uh, you know, my shiny understanding of the technology but not really understanding the domain at all. Um, so... Next, I want to talk about something that really did work, but I didn't do it. Um, and <laughs> this is actually one of my favorite um, projects of the last couple of years. Uh, somebody took um, the, well, the team at Onformative, they took a whole bunch of satellite photos and they ran um, face detectors across them. And hopefully you can see um, there, there appears to be some kind of Jesus in a cornfield on the left-hand side, and a very grumpy uh, river delta um, on the right. And I thought this was brilliant. Like, this is really imaginative. This is really different. This is really kind of joining together a data set with, um, you know, a completely different set of vision technologies um, and, you know, shows how well, um, how far we've come with face recognition. Um, but... Shortly after I saw this example, um, I actually ran across this news story about a landslide in Afghanistan um, that had killed over 1,000 people. And what was really heartbreaking about this was that the geologists looking at just the super low res, um, you know, not very recent satellite photos and the elevation data on Google Earth said that it was painfully, painfully clear that this landslide was actually going to be happening. Um, so what I'm going to um, you know, just finish up with here is there's a whole bunch of other stuff that we really um, could be solving with this. Um, and 
what I'm trying to do is actually just start a discussion mailing list here at Vision for Good, where we can bring together some people who are working on this vision stuff and um, the nonprofits who actually want to um, get some help. So I'm really hoping you can join me there. Um, no obligation, but I want to see what happens from this.